God the praise that he deserves. Amen. Now, please. So, guys, make good to you today. I just need you to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. There's no way you can give God the highest praise in your lowest tone. So, when you tell him hallelujah, you got to scream to the mountaintops and let him know that you thank him for all that he's done for you. So, one more time, if God has been good to you, let me hear you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you just for another day, for another opportunity, Lord God. I thank you for allowing me to be your vessel, Lord God. I ask that as I step back, you take control. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Those that know me, what I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> all right, now, all right. And I say that jokingly every Sunday, but every time I'm up here, but I just want to let you guys know that God has told me in this season to focus on quality, not quantity. So if I can stand up here and give you 15 minutes of quality preaching, then I've done my job. Amen. Amen. No Amen. reason to be like that always, but in this season, God Amen. is good. Amen. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, I'm going to continue the series of spiritual growth. The Overseer has started, and we know it's been a wonderful series yeah. so far. Yeah. So I'm just praying that this will also help you know that you can grow a little bit more. Um, up until last Sunday, I had been saying that this was going to be a, a sermon of affirmations. But if you were here last Sunday and you got the teaching <laughs> that we got, <laughs> I'm going to change that and say this is going to be a sermon of God formations. Amen. 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 All right. Today's lesson about spiritual growth is understanding and utilizing the power and authority in your tongue. Amen. So if you want to grow spiritually today, I need you to repeat after me. Say, I will. I will. I can. I can. I am. I am. I will. I will. I can. I can. I am. I am. I will. I will. I can. I can. I am. Amen. Today's scripture text will be coming from Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 through 21. I'll give you a second to get to it. Again, that's Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 through 21. And it reads, From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just telling you that when you, whatever you speak over yourself, it will come back to you. It's just saying that every time you speak over yourself, it needs to be something positive. Because whether you say something good or bad, something positive or negative, it will eventually manifest. Especially that voice inside. Yes, so that a man thinketh, so is he. Yes, so it's all about thinking. And speaking positivity. The key is always to speak and think life and positivity, no matter what situation you're in. In the midst of your valley, in the midst of your depression, in the midst of your grief, in the midst of your rocky marriage, in the midst of your addiction, it doesn't matter. When you feel like you're falling apart, in the midst of chaos, always speak life. You have to be able to say, I will overcome. I can make it out. I am loved. If you believe there's power of life and death in the tongue, let me hear you say, I will. I will. I can. I can. I am. I am. All right. Number one, I will. I will is your commitment. In Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, I want you to listen to how many times he say, I will. Watch out, bro. Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Eight times. Eight times he said, I will. And everything he said he would do, he did it. Because every time you say, I will, you're fully committing to whatever comes after. 
You committed to seeing it through to the end. Amen. No more empty promises from us because God always comes through. We have to commit. We have to say, I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. I will not lean on my, under, my own understanding. I will acknowledge him in all my ways and he will direct my path. I will seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Yes. And all these things will be added once I commit. I will turn from my wicked ways so I can inherit the kingdom. Yes. I will repent so I will be saved. I will acknowledge God as Lord and Savior so I will be accepted. I will extend grace so I can receive it. I will sow so I can reap. Amen. I will surrender. I will, I will, I will. Yes. The beauty of it all, with every commitment that you make, God rewards you for it. If you believe there is power in life and death in the tongue, let me hear you say, I will. I will. Amen. Amen. But remember that faith without works is dead. So whatever you say you're going to do, it's going to take some work to get it done. Amen. 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 If you're still with me, if you're still following me, let me hear you say, I will. I, will. I can. I, can. I, am. I am. See, I'm going to have you say that all through this message because it's about what you say and how you say it uh -huh. to determine Jordan. what's going to happen to you in your life. Yeah. Number two, I can. We already established that I will is your commitment. The I can is your confidence. Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We've established again that our will is your commitment, that I can is your confidence. As a child, we were told that you could be or do anything that you put your mind to. Think it, say it, do it. But the key is through Christ. Yeah, man, yeah. Through Christ. Yeah. I can find peace. Through Christ, I can have joy. Through Christ, I can produce good fruit. Through Christ, I can break that generational curse. Yeah. I can be used to glorify God. I can turn my life around. I can fix my marriage. Like the prodigal son, I can come home. I can, I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That job you want, you can have it. That car you want, you can have it. That body you working for in the gym, you can have it. But you have to acknowledge Christ through praying, through fasting, through serving, through praising, through worshiping. Christ is the source of our strength, and through yeah. him, you can have the power and authority to say, I can do anything. Amen. There's a quote I heard long ago that says, those who say they can and those who say they can't are both usually right. right. <laughs> Being confident is, the key, is your key component to your spiritual growth. Yes, Being confident in God's word. Be confident in who he's called you to be. If you believe there's power of life and death in the tongue, let me hear you say, I can. I can. Amen. And number three, I am. He said, I will is your commitment. I can is your confidence. The I am is your comfort. Exodus chapter 3 and 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. Because God is who he is, you are able to be committed confident and again the I am is your comfort mm -hmm. so what does God mean when he says I am that I am mm -hmm. I have a few scriptures for you to let you know John chapter 6 and verse 51 I am mm -hmm. the living bread which came down from heaven yes, if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever yes, and the bread that I will give it is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. Most strength trainers, nutritionists, or those people who are just trying to live a healthier life, they tell you to stay away from bread because the bread it sticks to you, it holds to you. But that's the exact reason we need our spiritual bread to stick to us, to sustain us. Through this mean and evil world, we need to be filled with the world, with the word. I'm sorry. God says, I am the bread of life. So you are able to say, I am fulfilled. Yes. I am sustained. Yes. Yes. Man should not live off bread alone, but out of every word that comes out of the oh, mouth of God, yes. I am. Thank you, Lord. John 8 and 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
Anybody ever been in some dark places? <laughs> Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, I know I have. Jesus tells us I am the light of the world. So if we truly follow him, we will not walk in darkness. Whatever dark place you may be in, turn to Jesus. Turn to the light. Jesus saying, I am the light of the world, allows us to say, I am walking in light and not in darkness. He's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. Jesus is the I am. John 10 and 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Yes. <laughs> We're living in a time where people are trying to create all these different doors to make it to heaven. There's only one door you can go to. And Jesus tells us, I am that door. John 10 and 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. God came here in the flesh to overcome sin. For us that we, uh, that we be saved and protected. A shepherd feeds his flock, protects his flocks, and guides his flock. Jesus feeds us with his word, protects us from the enemy, and guides us in the way that we should go. Thank you. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, we can say, I am well taken care of. Amen. John 15 and 1. I am the vine. Amen. You are the branches. Yes. If you remain in me and I in you, Amen. you will bear much fruit. Amen. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. As long as we're connected to the vine, we have life. We have opportunity. But if the branch disconnects, it dies. If we, if we disconnect from Christ, we die spiritually. We have to stay connected to the vine. Jesus saying, I am the vine, allows us to say, I am able. John 11 and 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, sir. All right, now. Yes. That's a question for you. Yes. Do you believe this? Yeah. There's only one man that can resurrect your dead spirit. One. Just as he brought Lazarus from the dead. Yes. If Jesus was to say, Minister Gilmore, come forth. Brandon, come forth. Minister Waters, come forth. Would you come? Mm -hmm. Come on, on now. Talk to me. Would you come? One of my favorite songs, when I was making my transition out of the world back to Christ, it's titled Dead Man Walking. Mm -hmm. And it says, I was a dead man walking until you, referencing Jesus, brought me back to life. Mm -hmm. There's only one who can resurrect your dead spirit. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you now, yeah. I'm going to tell you yeah. from experience yes, that it was only God that brought me back to life. Amen. Jesus saying, I am the resur uh, resurrection in life Amen. allows us to say, I am redeemed. Yes. John 14 and 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. Amen. No one comes to the Father except through me. All right, now. I am the way you're supposed to follow. Anybody ever feel like they lost their way? I know I have. I am who you can trust. I am the example you need to imitate. No one comes through the Father except through me. He's already told you I am that door. He is the only way, the only way we can get to the kingdom. If you believe that you have power of life and death in the tongue, let me hear you say, I will, I, will. I, can. I can, I am, I, am. I, will. I will, I can, I, can. I, am. I am, I will, I, will. I, will. I, can. I can, I am. I am. I just want to give you guys a testimony because I don't want you guys to think that I just come up with this stuff and I haven't been through it. I want you to know that we just came from doing a play called God's Trombone. And if anybody knows me, they know I don't like public speaking. They know that I get nervous. I get to sweat and I get to fumbling and bubbling over my words. But I had to tell myself every day that I practiced that, that part that I had to deliver. I will deliver this part. 
confidently, clearly, yeah. and boldly. I literally said that every day, even up until I was standing right before I went on, I said, I can, I will, and I am going to do this. And everybody know, when I pulled out that weak knot, <laughs> I was confident. I was glad, but I knew that my strength rested in God. I'm telling you, and I, uh, I was watching a video the other day. You guys know I'm a movie guy. Uh, Denzel is one of my favorite actors, and I saw this video of a kid. He met him for the first time, and he said, I am going to be doing a movie with you soon. He was an up-and-coming actor. And Denzel's response was, I will see you at work. Wow. One year later, The Equalizer 2 came out, and that young man was on set with Denzel Washington. You have to understand the power in your words. You have to understand that there is power in your words. So you have to speak life and positivity over yourself, yeah. over your children, over your family, and those that you are surrounded by. Yeah. And lastly, it's a movie that me and my wife, we were watching last night. It's called Hacksaw Ridge. It's one of my favorite movies, but it's because it's about a guy that went into the army Everybody knows that when you go to war, the main objective is to kill. Yes, but this man would not bear arms because of his belief in God. Mm -hmm. And even in his boot camp, it's so powerful because in his boot camp, it went from being in boot camp to when they were beating him up because they were being punished because he would not grab his, his military rifle. So they were all being punished because of him. So one night, they just chose to beat him up in his sleep and he was beating, his face was bruised up really bad. And the next day, the commander tried to get him to quit. And he said, no, I won't. And he said, I am going to see this through. Wow. And by the end of the movie, they were going into Japan, into yeah. Okinawa, yeah. onto Hagsaw Ridge. Yeah. And they went up, and they were being blown to pieces. And they went up 100 and something men, came down 32. But he stayed up there. And one by one, he, he yeah. just yeah. lowered yeah. their people that were in there. But yeah. that's not the great part. Because like I said, in boot camp, they were beating him up for not grabbing his rifle. But the next day, when they saw what he had done, they would not move until he got done praying. Mm. Because the power of God will always yeah. show in your weakness. His strength yeah. is glorified in yeah. our weakness. Yeah. So you have to understand, you have to say, I will, I can, and I am. God is amazing. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.